when we write a number and then we put another little number up there, what does it mean, that little number? Yeah? Um, so it would be like 3 fifths times 3 fifths times 3 fifths. fifths times 3 fifths times 3 fifths equals, well, so we multiply straight across. 3 times 3 times 3 is 27. 5 times 5 times 5. 125. 27 over 125. Can we simplify that? If, if we could have simplified, simplified it way back here. But since this, you can't simplify this, if you just multiply it by itself, they're not going to share any factors at the end. Which property is being used here? It's the associative. Okay. So it's the associative. How do you remember it's the associative? What? Right, do they stay the same? They stay the same? Yeah. What about them stays the same? They don't move, but the numbers stay in the middle of change. The... Huh? The numbers Okay. The parentheses just move, right? It, 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 and the parentheses, it's not about moving parentheses. It's more like the parentheses are telling you where to draw your attention. That's all the parentheses are telling you to do. So they're, the parentheses are saying you're concentrating on these two first, and then you add 7. And over here it says you're concentrating on these two first, and then you're subtracting 6. Does it matter which one, which way you do it? Of course not. That's why it says equal in the middle. And just from our experience with adding numbers, it's not going to make a difference. Um, and I'll share again how I remember it. The key word here is uh, associate. The root word is associate. And associate just means two things or two people are interacting with each other in some way. So the way we associate in addition is to add. So these two associate first, then this one comes in. Or these two at the end associate first, and this one comes in afterwards. It doesn't matter. Either way, it's the same. Commutative, on the other hand, what, what's the root word of commutative? Commute. Commute. What does commute mean? They move. They move, right? And in commutative, they actually move, the, the numbers will move. They'll trade positions. So there's movement of the, of the numbers. We're going to evaluate the sum for the given value of x. What does that mean that we're going to do? How do we start evaluating this? Put yeah, what, it, what x is supposed to be and what is x supposed to be? Negative 3, we just put that guy in there. Negative 3 plus negative 5 plus 5. Okay. Do we need to add these two first or these two first? No. Negative, negative. The, the, negative, the negative, do we have to do that first? Yeah. We do? Yeah. Just hook with that one first? Right through it. Uh, okay, that's the order of operations, but also we have the associative property. It says I can add these two first or these two first. You see how what I was talking about? The, the thing about PEMDAS is not that it's the, the law and you have to do these two first because they're on the left. You can, you can do lots of things in lots of different orders as long as you respect what the order of operations is trying to maintain. Okay. But there is the associated property that says we can add these together first or we can add these together first, it doesn't matter. If we add these together first, though, that's kind of easy, right? What's negative 5 plus 5? Zero. Zero, and then we can add negative 3 after that. We get negative 3. If, but if we do negative 3 minus 5, we get negative 8 plus 5, still negative 3. Uh, 13 minus negative, what does it mean to subtract a negative? You're, you're adding a positive. Adding a positive. So 13 plus 5 is 18. Okay, again, 1 half minus a negative, so we might as well write 1 half. One half plus one fourth. Yeah? You need to change the um, two or one half to a four, and then you need to change the one into a two. Okay, you're right. But we're not, it's not just change, right? How, how does change happen? You have to have the common, same common denominator. Okay, that's why we want it to change. We have to have the common denominator. And how do we do it? Like mathematical operations, what do we do? You have to, uh, I don't know what you have to do. I just do it. I don't. 
Okay, well now's a, a fine time to, to refine what you do and why, or how at least. You have to find what the common denominator of two and four is, which is four, so you just Why is it four? Because two can go into four. Because two times something is four? Yeah. Yes. Okay, two times what is four? Two times two. Two, so then we also have to multiply the numerator by two. Okay. So that's how that change, you're right about that change, that's how the change happens. So two fourths plus one fourth, three fourths. Three fourths. Okay. So at this point, because of my experience in another class of mine, lots of classes of mine, uh, but it came up today, I, uh, I I got to this step and somebody just shouted out three fourths. I said, "Great, how do you do it?" And they said, "I don't know." And they just held up their calculator. Okay, if you're just using your calculator, you're punching in one half plus one fourth, and you think it's like super great that your calculator can do that for you and get three fourths, like you can even get the fraction. Um, and you, but you can't tell me how to add fractions together. I'll take your calculator from you if you tell me that you only use your calculator and you don't know how to do it. Okay, because that just weakens you from the very beginning. You can't add fractions together now. What about when fractions have variables in them? You're not going to be able to use your calculator to add those. Even if you could, we could just keep stepping up the difficulty past what calculators can do, and you need to at some point have a basic understanding of how to add fractions, how to multiply fractions, how to whatever. So if I'm asking you to do something, and you say, blah, 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 I'm not listening, I'll just use my calculator, it's just going to be to your detriment at some point. Because you're going to come to me, and you're not going to know how to do stuff. And I'm going to try and go back to what you should know, and you're going to say, I don't know how to do that. So I'm going to go back before that, and you're going to say, I don't know how to do that. I'm going to back you up as far as we need to go, and I'm going to teach you step by step how to do what I'm asking you to do without a calculator. Now that's not to say that calculators aren't cool and that I don't love calculators, I do. Okay. But here's a, a simple diagram uh, to tell whether or not you should use a calculator. So uh, should I use a calculator? Okay. Can you do it? without one. Okay? If you say no, then don't use it. If you say yes, then go ahead and save yourself some time and use it. If it's saving you time, great. How to save you some time. If you know exactly how to add these two fractions together, with no problem, great. Use your calculator and have it tell you the answer is three-fourths. And you're like, yeah, I would find the common denominator, but I just want to save some time. If you don't know what you're doing without your calculator, don't use your calculator. Do it by hand. Right? I care so little about the right answer. It's so boring to me. I could just get a cap. I could search Google and get all the right answers to every problem I ever wanted. I don't care about that. I don't want a bunch of computers that just just give me the right answer. I want to see that you understand. Okay. That's what I like, and I'll reward trying more than I will just spitting out right answers because your calculator has given it to you. Okay. So next, evaluate the expression given values of x, y, and z. So we're going to do what with 3.6? Put it where the x is. Put it where the x is. Just put that down right there. Put 6.6 there. And with the negative 11, you put it right there. So we get? Negative 3. Well, let's, let's give ourselves some time here. 3.6 minus 6.6 minus uh, the absolute value of negative 11. If we follow the order of operations, we 
I do the parentheses, 3.6 minus 6.6. Negative 3. Negative 3 minus. Why 11? Because the absolute value is negative 11. Okay, how do we know that? What is the absolute value? It's the negative Yes. How far is it away from zero? Eleven. How far is negative eleven from zero? It's a distance of eleven away from zero. <coughs> so negative fourteen. <coughs> All right. Are there any questions about any problem from the quiz specifically? Are there any questions about a homework problem that? wasn't talked about on the quiz? Uh, yeah. Um, number 15 on 2.3. It's number you have to correct it. Oh, uh, yeah. tricky. Those can be tricky. Let's just do our work and and see if we don't do something differently than what they do. Okay, it's really helpful. Even if you're trying to help somebody else figure out their work, it's it's really hard to know where to start sometimes. So it's best to go back to their very first step, see what they did in the first step. Do that. Even that can be kind of confusing. So it's even helpful for me sometimes if I, I can't quite make out what you did wrong. I'll just put your work aside. I'll start the problem. I'll do it all the way through. And then I'll look at your work and say, oh, I see where we differ. Okay. And that applies to your own work, too. If you can't figure out why you're getting something wrong, just go very, all the way back, erase everything, tear down the sandcastle, start over. Okay? Work from the beginning. So from the very beginning, we're going to put a 3 in for x. Okay. Here's what I like to do. I like to put a parentheses there where the x was and plug in what I'm supposed to have. Okay. Then I'm supposed to subtract y. Okay, I'll leave a, a little blank spot for y. And what is y? Negative, Negative 8. Okay, and then we add 2. Uh, okay, so we're just going to subtract negative 8. What's, the, what's subtracting negative 8? That's just adding, adding 8. 3 plus 8 plus 2. So that's 13. Let's see what they did. So the first step, they do the substitution. Does it look the same as ours? No. No, it does not? No, it does not. But how's it different? It's different. Derek? Because I just put parentheses around negative eight. Or, yeah, minus eight. They just put parentheses around negative eight? They added negative eight. They added negative eight when you're supposed to yeah. subtract negative eight. So that's understandable, right? If you're working really fast and you're going to subtract it, or you're going to replace. You're going to substitute a negative where there's already a negative. You can get confused and say, well, I'm going to put a negative there. Well, there's already a negative, so that takes care of that. Maybe. Maybe your brain tells you something like that. But just remember, you're still subtracting whatever y is. And so that substitution needs to happen exactly as it's prescribed. Okay. Um, so that was a, an issue from previous quiz the quiz that we took the last time. Um, and, and something else that I want to talk about was integer. Okay, There are a lot of answers like uh, you know, 5 is a whole number. I don't think anybody had any struggles with that. But there is like negative 4.99. And because it wasn't written like this, I think this was another one on that, on that question. Uh, this one, we got rational, no problem. Most people said that's a rational number. What kind of number is this? It's what? Rational. It is rational, right? Now, they're all rational numbers, but we would say, like, this one's a more special one. This one's an integer. Or this one's even more special than that. It's a whole number. Uh, I got a lot of this is an integer, because it's not rational in a way that it's not one number divided by another, like we're used to seeing ratios and fractions. Um, but it is a rational number. Even decimals, as long as they either end 
Or if they go on forever, they repeat the pattern. If this one ends, we could write this as one number divided by another. In fact, that's what we did. So this is also rational. Okay. Now, integers are a lot like whole numbers, but they could also be negative. So if you have a negative 5, well, that can't be a whole number. It's not as special as a whole number. It would just be an integer. Okay. Integers are always whole in the way that they're not partial numbers, they're not decimals, they're not uh, fractions um, in the way that we think about fractions. We're going to think of them as fractions. They're all over 1. They're all divided by 1. So like negative, uh, let's say 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, in both directions. Not negative 3. And not 7.6 or 5 halves, it's all. All of them are over 1, all divided by 1. So, just a little bit of a confusion I saw and wanted to address. Are there any other questions from any other problems on the homework? All right, we'll get those facts in our homework. So before we start, I want to just be up front about the stuff we're going to learn and so you can, I don't know, see mile markers as we go along. So today we're going to, we've talked about this already. We, we watched the video on order of operations, right, in this class? Yeah? No? Yes, we did. Who says we did? The guy writes with marker really fast. No. Doesn't stick figures. We saw that? No. 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 saw that? Okay, we did do that. Yeah, so, yeah, PEMDAS, he says in my video, is not the law. It's not, uh, there, there's not a one order of operations that rules them all and is the best and the right one. Okay? So that's why. If you can read this, I know it's small because I have to write a few of them up here together. I put our, we're going to apply our order of operations. It looks like this. We talked about this. PE, uh, parentheses, exponents, multiplication and division right next to each other because what that's trying to communicate is multiplication and division to us at least. Neither one of them takes priority over the other. The only thing that takes priority is left to right <coughs> with multiplication and division. Addition and subtraction as well, left to right. Okay, so we'll, we'll practice some of that. Um, we're going to multiply numbers. and multiplied numbers before, of course. So it's not a new concept. Uh, so what I am going to bring is something 
something new to the table, which is y a negative times a negative is positive. Okay, so we'll talk about that. Um, do you need to be able to show that? No, you don't have to be able to show why a negative times a negative is a positive. You just need to know that it is and be able to apply it correctly each time. But uh, those are the kinds of things I always want to know, so I'm going to share that with you. And we're going to talk about the distributive property, which again, you are familiar with at least. Um, so I'm going to show you a little proof of why the distributive property works. Okay, so let's get started with PEMDAS. Do a little bit of practice there. That's 1.2. Section 1.2 in your books. If you like to have your book open, that's where we are. I am going to have you do copies out of there, so if you'd like to have your book for that, that would be good. Okay. So, the only thing I'll say is just kind of reiterate what we talked about that day when we watched the video. If you weren't here, let me recap something for you. I put this problem up on the board. Okay. And I talked about how this was, this was actually a little bit of a meme that, that went through the internet for a while. Uh, people argued about what the value of this expression was. And uh, for those of you who are here, we found two different things. What two different numbers did we find? Two and 288. Two and 288. Yeah. Two and 288. Now that's that's not okay. I mean, we can't come up with two different answers. This has to be worth a number. You have to be able to execute all of the operations and get to an agreed upon uh, result. Okay. The problem with this is it's not written very well. It's written confusingly. If you don't agree on the order you're supposed to do stuff. So if we add these two first. I think most people do that. Uh, that's 12. So 2 times 12. So now you could divide 48 by 2 and get 24 and then multiply that by 12. Or what some people do is choose to multiply these together first. Get 48 divided by 24. This way gives you 2. This way gives you 288. Okay. And it's not a trick. It's not a mind bender thing is just a choice of which thing to do first. Okay. Some people were taught PEMDAS like that, and that this is first, and that this is second. Multiplication always comes first. No. We could, it's not wrong. It's not wrong. It's just the way they were taught. It's just the way that they agreed to do the order. Okay. So if we worked in, in that structure, that would be okay. We would be used to it. We would adjust our uh, things that we write down, our expressions, so that if we wanted things done in a certain order, we would specify most often with parentheses. Okay? If this were the case, if multiplication always came first, you would get two. Okay? That would be the agreement. You would get two. Um, if that were the agreement and I wanted you to get 288, then under these rules, I would have to make sure with parentheses that you did the division first. Okay, That's what I'd have to do if that's what we agreed we were going to do. But in this class, in this book, in a lot of math classes, in the math classes that I was taught in, it was more like this. And that's what I have written up there. Parentheses first, absolutely first. That's what parentheses are for. They're not even a mathematical operator. They are just a grouping mechanism. They just group stuff together. If I took these parentheses away and I didn't group them together, then you would think that 2 times 9 was just, that was it, 2 times 9, and then add 3, and don't multiply 3 by 2. So parentheses should group things together, so definitely get the parentheses because the author of the problem is doing that on purpose and wants you to to look at the parentheses first. Then exponents, after parentheses are done. After exponents are done, multiplication and division from left to right. From left to right. That's why, if we use this, if we apply this to this problem, we shouldn't get that. It'll only be
because he just decided to do that. He just decided to let multiplication and division be equal and to do them from left to right. And then again for addition and subtraction, do it from left to right. So with all that said, let's practice in 1.2, let's do number 18. Let's go. I'm just going to have you do it so you can get started if you want. Or you can wait till I write it down. You don't have a book. you get stuck in this, there are some people who are stuck in this PEMDAS thing and they don't realize you can do all sorts of things as long as you just, like, respect the order of operations in general. Um, so what according to the order of operations are we supposed to pay attention first? Parentheses. Parentheses, okay. Well, what are these? Brackets. Brackets. Are they same as parentheses? No. Well, maybe not in English. But here they are. You group stuff together. That's all you're doing. Okay? They only use square brackets if there's parentheses inside. So rather than parentheses within parentheses, sometimes we use square brackets. I don't know. In, in my mind, I just think of them as like, oh, brackets are stronger. They look a little, I don't know, beefier. So they can hold in parentheses as well. But there's no reason why you have to use square brackets. So they're just grouping stuff together. So we do have what's equivalent to parentheses, at least. Uh, in concept. So we got parentheses there. Uh, but
But as part of those parentheses, what do we have inside these parentheses? We do have exponents. But before that exponents, we also have another set of parentheses. So in order to do these parentheses, you have to do these parentheses. Like we have, so that leads you to, to the conclusion, like we're extrapolated out. We would have to go inside parentheses, inside parentheses, all the way to the very inside set of parentheses if that happens. If we have multiple sets of parentheses, we have to go all the way into the most inner parentheses and work our way out. Okay. He said that in that video. He was saying exactly that. Um, so we'll do the 9 minus 5 first. Okay. Minus 4 squared. So now the parentheses have really done their job. They have made you subtract 5 from 9. That number is 4. That number 4, which was in the parentheses, is the thing you're supposed to square. So we don't even need to write parentheses anymore. Now what do we do? Exponents. Exponents, yeah. As part, it's like this sub-problem, this problem within a problem. In order to do the parentheses, which I need to do first, I need to do the exponent that's within the parentheses. Okay? So we've got like order of operations inside of order of operations. And what is 4 squared? 16. 16. Still, we're grouping together that difference, and then we're going to multiply that difference by 8. What is 20 minus 16? 4. Four. Four. Now we don't need parentheses because the parentheses have served their purpose. They have, they have completely drawn out the value of 4, and we have 32. Do that each time if you respect the parentheses, and then don't try and like do 20 minus 4 and then square it. Don't square this 5, right? Because it's not 5 that's being squared, it's everything in the parentheses that's being squared. So put it together first, then square it. to move on past this section go to the next one. Does that mean everybody else? Okay, there we go. And there. Let's go to 2.4. Uh, Good luck, they've got a handle on multiplication. Of two numbers. Okay. Two times three, five times seven. We'll stay with whole numbers. Can we multiply whole numbers together? Yeah. Okay. This times table stuff. All right. All right. Um, fractions. How do we multiply fractions together if we have them side by side? Straight across. Numerator times numerator. Denominator times denominator. Okay. What? How do you multiply fractions together? Oh, you do brackets. Thank you. Thank you, Jerry. Can I say something about brackets? Brackets? Yeah. It's pretty far. I'll try and speak up. Okay. Okay. All right. So multiply fractions straight across. Talked about that before. Shaking your head at me or Derek? Me? No. Oh, yeah. I was Trevor. Derek. At Derek. <laughs> yeah. Come on. Man. That's it. That's it. Get together. Okay. So there we go, fractions. Uh, decimals. Could you multiply decimals together without a calculator? Who thinks they can do it? Okay, I'm going to call on Megan. Megan's going to get herself some extra credit. Can you come, come on up and are you comfortable multiplying some decimals together? No. Am I saying Megan? What am I saying? Oh, I don't Haley, sorry, Haley. Haley. Who wants to come up here and multiply some decimals together? Okay. Connor, sorry for calling you Megan. Let's get extra credit. All right, what we got? Let's do uh, 3.2 times 1.65. So 
that one works for that one too? Six times three. Like about six times three? Oh god. Okay, come out here. Decimals, you just line them up just like regular multiplication and you multiply each each place, each place value by every other place value. It's really you're using distribu distribution right now. You've been using distribution every time since you multiply two digit numbers together. You multiply the hundreds place by this tens place and this ones place. You multiply the tens place by the tens place and the ones place and the ones place. By the tenths place, one place. Really, you've, you've distributed everything from here. Two tenths, si or two, hundreds, two hundred, the five hundreds, six tenths, and one whole. You've distributed all of them, multiplied them by uh, two tenths and three wholes, and then you add them all together. That's distribution. Okay. Um, and then, how did Connor decide where the decimal place goes? You got three, three digits behind the decimal place here, so you put three digits behind the decimal place in your solution, your product. Okay, we can multiply by decimals, we can multiply by fractions, we can multiply by whole numbers. All right, going well. Okay, so now let's get into negative times negative. Okay, so uh, I had uh, an, an aide in here, in here earlier, and I asked her what she thought. Uh, objectively, she's just sitting over there observing, and she said, at these parts I might have over-explained. So what I want you to know is, after I get all done, all, like nothing in your world will have changed. A negative times a negative will be a positive. You know that now, I think, okay? I think all of you know that negative times negative is positive. What I'm gonna do now is just prove to you that it has to be that way, because to me, when I was in school, things like that would come up, and I would say, but why is a negative times a negative or a positive? I would want to know those things. And, uh, well, it was a little hard to teach the first time you learned that fact, but now you're at the point where you could learn that there's some kind of a proof, a proof that has to be. That's what we're going to do. But at the end of it, you won't really have to like prove anything else uh, or have any new knowledge. You're just going to know something for you. So let's start with regular old multiplication. Uh, how can I represent this with addition? How can I make this an addition problem? Five plus five plus five. Five plus five plus five. Three groups of five. Remember learning that when you multiply? Yeah. Three groups of five. Okay, let's do three times negative five. A positive times a negative is gonna be a negative. How can I represent this with addition? Yeah, I got three groups of negative five. That makes intuitive sense. Negative five plus negative five plus negative five. 
positive 15. This is negative 15. Okay. So now we're going to pretend. Yes? Oh, thanks. We're going to pretend we don't know that negative 3 times negative 5 is positive 15. We're going to figure out what would it have to be. Here's the question. Negative 3 times negative 5. And it's, it's kind of harder to do it this way because how do you have, here you can think negative, or you can think three groups of negative five. That, I, I, can, I can picture that. But negative three groups of negative five is a, a little bit strange. Okay, so what we're gonna do, we're gonna come over here and do some separate work. And inside of that work, we're gonna wind up with negative three times negative five and find out it's got to be positive 15. There's no other way. And really, that's the answer uh, to, to that question. The reason why negative 3 times negative 5, five has to be 15, let's go all the way back to the very beginning of, of math history. Okay? There was a time when negative numbers did not exist. There was even a time when uh, 0 didn't exist. There was a time when numbers themselves were a new idea. The idea of counting things had to be developed, had to be invented. Come up through history, we've been doing stuff with numbers, adding them together, maybe multiplying them, doing these different things. And then the idea of negative numbers comes up. And at one point in history, for at least one person or group of people, negative three times negative five was this whole new ball game, and they did not know what the result was. They intuitively, you might think, like, I think it should be 15, but we're going to prove that it has to be. So here's how we're going to do it. We're going to take negative three times 5 plus negative 5. Okay, we're going to start there. Well, we already know what this will come out to be in the end. We know what the answer is going to be. Can you tell me what the answer is going to be when you get all done? It's got to be 0. How do you know? Why does this all have to be equal to 0? Yes? Which, which implies something fairly obvious that 5 minus 5 is 0, three times, negative 3 times 5, or negative 3 times 0 is going to be 0. So we know that however we write this, it all has to come out to be 0. Okay? So what I'm going to do, rather than adding these together first, I'm going to distribute this out. Which you've done before, you know distribution works. Okay? So here we have negative 3 times 5. And here we have negative 3 times negative 5 plus negative 3 times negative 5. We know, still know, that's equivalent to, to what we wrote before. It's still got to be 0. And we already talked about this. What's negative 3 times 5? What's negative 3 times 5? Negative 15. We, we discussed that. Five groups of negative 3, I can intuitively understand that is negative 15. Plus, still a mystery, let's pretend it's a mystery. Plus something gives you zero. We know that negative 15 plus this mystery thing has got to be zero. But what does that mystery thing have to be? It's got to be plus positive 15. Negative 15 plus 15 is the only thing that will cause us to get zero. So we know by our deductive reasoning that this would have to be positive 15. Kind of nice. Now you know. Now it's absolutely true. It has to be. There is no way that negative three times negative five could be anything other than positive fifteen. Right? Now, is that a proof that all negatives times another negative is positive? It's a good question. I know because I asked it. I ask really good questions. Okay. Is that a proof that all negatives times all other negatives? positive. That's just a proof that specifically negative 3 times negative 5 is positive 15. Okay? So I'm going to take it a little overkill and I'm just going to say it's going to work for any negative number because I'm going to let them be variables. Because right, that way, if they're variables, we can just plug anything we want in there and it'll always be true. Okay. So take A negative a times 
negative a times b plus negative b. Same idea, that's got to be 0. b minus b is 0. Anything times 0 will be 0. So we'll distribute. Negative a times b plus negative a, negative a, not e, negative a times negative b, 0. Well, we know that negative a b plus something, negative a b plus something equals 0. So it's the only thing that you could add to negative a b to get 0. Negative. How are we going to add something to it to get zero? <coughs> positive AB. Add the opposite of that thing. The opposite of negative AB is positive AB. So negative A times negative B, that's any number that's negative times any number that's negative, has to be positive that product. It's like A times B, it's got to be positive. Like I said, it doesn't change anything. It doesn't make you know anything new that you can apply to all the problems, but you can know that is true for sure. And if anybody ever asks you, but why is a negative times a negative a positive, now you could show them. Okay. Who's glad to know that? All right, three, four, five people. That's great. Right. That's totally a win for me. Now let's take it over to 2.5. 2.4 is multiplication. We can multiply whole numbers, fractions, decimals, positive times negative, negative times negative. It's all there. Variables times variables. So we know that if we had 9 times x plus 2, we can use the what property? Distributed, Distributed property. Which means we get 9x plus 18. I expect we all know how to distribute a number through some parentheses. That's great. But now we're going to talk about how we can be sure. So let's look at a simpler multiplication problem. Because this distribution is really a multiplication problem. 9 times something else. So let's do another multiplication problem. 4 times 5. Well. One way we can visualize a multiplication problem is with shapes, a rectangle. If this side is 4 and this side is 5, this side is 4, this, times, this side is 5. How do I find the area of that rectangle? 5 times 4. This side is 4. Right, this side is 1, 2, 3, 4 feet, or whatever. This side's 5. <coughs> 2, 3, 4, 5. And we multiply these 4 by these 5. What we wind up getting is 20 of these area units that are square. They should be square. So what we have is 20 of whatever units we were starting with squared. So we can represent any multiplication problem with an area of a rectangle. One side, other side, multiply the two sides together. Inside the area, that's, that number is the product of the two. So here. this is really a multiplication problem. It's 9 times another quantity. 9, that'll be that guy right there. This will be 9. This side would be x plus 2. So how to represent that, that's what we want to talk about. Well, let's say this is 2. How do I put x on there? Oh. How do I represent a length as 2 plus x? Do you 
even? 2x. Two, what does 2x two mean? 2x? Two right, but we have 2 plus x. Uh, okay. okay, they're different. 2 plus x and 2 times x. Different thing. How would I represent, uh, this, is, this is 2 right here. How would I represent 2 plus 3? Instead of 2 plus x, 2 plus 3. How do I represent that? It's 5. So I put 2 and then I put 3 more. How do I do 2 plus 5? 2 and then another 5. So how do I do 2 plus x? 2x. 2x is 2 times x. So can we say maybe like it depends on how long x is? Yes. Good, good. So that. That makes this a little bit difficult to talk about because x is unknown. It's a variable. It could be anything. So if I put this is x, the problem with that is I could get out my ruler and I could measure that dotted line and say it's about this long according to the scale you've set up over here, right? So there's a little bit of a problem with that. So we have to use our imagination uh, and just call it x and then say, hey, that thing could be as long as you want. Right? Make it however long you want. Add it on, shorten it up, it doesn't matter. Okay? So this side is 2 plus however much more x is. Okay. So let's put that much on the bottom. Draw the rest of this rectangle. Even put a line down there. So remember, what we're trying to do is find what is 9 times 2 plus x. What is this product? That product can be represented by the area of the rectangle, the whole rectangle. And this rectangle is broken into two rectangles. So let's find the area of each rectangle separately. What's the area of this rectangle? 18. 2 times 9, 18. How long is this side? Nine. It's also 9. It's the same. You just shift it over here. So what's the area of this rectangle? Nine. 9 times what? X. Whatever X is, you multiply 9 by that thing. 9X. So how much is this area? How much is this area? And how do we combine those areas together? 9X plus 18. So you can see that's, that's a representation, of, of, a picture representation of why we have to multiply 9 times 2 and 9 times x, why we have to distribute that multiplication across everything. And that would work for an infinite number of terms that we're adding up. x plus 2 plus y plus q plus z squared plus whatever. We'd have to distribute to all of them and then add all up. And we could do it with anything. We need to show that a times any sum is equal to a times b plus a times c. So that's a, that's b, let's say that's c. This is a, this is b, this is c, this is b plus c along that side. This area is ab, this area is a times c, ab plus ac is the same as a times b plus c. What do we have in the end? Not anything totally new, just a, a picture proof that distribution works. They use it right there at the beginning of the, the section as well. Nice little picture so that we can prove to ourselves distribution works. So now let's put it to the test, see if we can uh, do something challenging. Just, oh, there it is. We're going to do 31. Each of you individually is going to do 31 in your notes. So if you have 31 there, go ahead and start. I'll write 31 up here as well.
best way I know of to teach, because the best way you can learn is to get stuff wrong, realize that that thing you did was wrong, uh, and then to, like whenever you try to make that mistake again, for it to, to fire off some kind of a little warning and say, no, you can't do that. Remember, you made that mistake before. We shouldn't be packing up and making lots of noise, okay? Uh, there's a story about a pilot who, uh, who planes. And he had his own personal plane, and he had a guy who like took care of his plane. And uh, so one day he's flying, he's flying through the air in his plane, and his engine stalls, and he has to make this emergency landing, and you know it's pretty scary. So he gets back to the hangar, and he figures out the guy who takes care of his plane put the wrong gas in. So what do you think he did? He fired the guy. He what? He yelped, he yelped the guy. Killed him. Killed him. Maybe. Fired him. Fired him. Okay. What he did? Oh, Trevor. What happens if you're flying a helicopter and you press the wrong button? <laughs> you make a mistake and you die. You can't really like learn from that. Okay, we're going to finish his story. So he, he makes a landing, he gets back, he talks to the guy, he says, I only want you to fill my gas tank. Because what do you think that guy's going to do when it comes time to fill gas tank? He's going to get it right. He's going to get it right. After the, the fear of having filled gas tank wrong and almost killing someone, gonna get it right That's horrible. okay now I'm not saying that you should go around trying to kill people and learning <laughs> lessons but it was more significant to him to make a mistake and then correct it than it would be to fill a thousand tanks correctly it was probably the the monotony of filling tanks with gas that caused him to make that mistake because he just got this autopilot rut that caused him to make that mistake now that might be a true story it might not be but it makes sense. You, you might want a guy who's made that mistake to 
fill the gas tanks so that he'll never make that mistake again. Yeah. That's it. Okay, so here we come back to this. If you disagree with me about the flame thing, fine. If you disagree with me that you're supposed to do everything right and that's how you always do things right, you're just wrong. Okay? You've got to make mistakes to learn. If you don't, you won't have learned anything. You'll just always be right about everything. You have no need to learn anything in the first place. All right, so coming back to this, we have some time to stop packing up. Uh, I see this mistake quite a bit, 3a times 2 plus a. What's the problem with that? Huh? didn't distribute it. OK, you can distribute it. You don't have to distribute it uh, like every time. But the, the reason why we do distribute it is we can't put these together. They're not what's called like terms. You guys know like terms, right? They're not like terms. You can't put those together, a number and a variable. You can't do it. Okay. So it's just 4a minus 1. You cannot combine those together into like 3 of something. They're not the same thing, so you can't put them together. Okay. So we distribute 2 times everything in there. So that's 8a minus 2. The purpose of the parentheses is over, so you don't need any more parentheses. You've multiplied. That's why there were parentheses there. Plus a. Now what? Collect like terms. You have two terms, a terms. 9a minus 2. Hold on. Hello? I was trying to get Kelly. <laughs> Bye. because I don't know, since it is incorrect, you know, what would I do with the rest of the stuff? Where, what would happen to this negative 1, and what's getting multiplied by 2? Is the 2 still going to get multiplied by 5, according to that person, or is it not? You see how there's so, there's so many problems with that. 4a is inside the parentheses, and what's inside the parentheses needs to get multiplied by 2 before we can get rid of the parentheses. Okay? So stuff can't come out of the parentheses until the parentheses gets done to it what needs to get done to it. Whether it gets multiplied by 2, divided by 5, multiplied by a negative 3, whatever it is. Yeah? How come the 2 can be distributed to the 4a, but you can't minus 1 from the 4a? Because it's just next to it? Because it's in the parentheses that it's not really distributed? The reason why you can't yeah. is because this isn't an a. Okay. Well, and this isn't just a number, it's not a constant. Okay, the 2 doesn't have an a, though. True, but I'm not trying to I'm not trying to add the two to the four. Okay, so let's look at four a. Here's four a. A plus a plus a plus a plus a. Okay, and adding up this four a. And if I subtract one from that, like there's no way to like collect them and say, oh, here's this big group. Of, it's just four a's and a negative one. But if I multiply by two, what I have is two groups of these. Two groups of these. Just another group of them. There's eight of them. Right. 
So I can have two groups of them, but I can't add them to something that's not the same type of the same. Yeah. So why can't you just add the other A to the four A? Because of parentheses. The parentheses are saying something's about to happen to everything inside here. Okay? And the thing that needs to happen to everything inside here is multiplying by two. You gotta multiply everything by two before you can combine it with this A. So if you add 4A to, to A, you didn't multiply the 4 by 2, right? And if you're going to multiply the 4 by 2, you've got to do the whole thing. You've got to distribute the 2 to everything. You can't just take stuff out of the parentheses, just suck it out of there with a vacuum. Stuff has to happen to it that the parentheses is asking to happen. So how can we Attention, you need to Don't forget to turn in your codes for to make it in. Well, that's just using the distributive property, right? Which we showed that if there's something outside the parentheses and a sum or a difference inside here, I can distribute the A to everything inside. Yes, if you can, if they're just two numbers or they're like terms. But if you can't, which you can't, you can't combine for a negative one. And you want, and you want to combine this a term with this a term, which clearly we all want to do. Which makes us all very happy if we do that. Uh, if we want to do that, we can't, we have to handle the parentheses, whatever the parentheses needs to have happen to it. And what we're doing it to it is multiplying it by two. So we need to find twice of that, and twice of that, two times that, two times that. Now the parentheses have been dealt with, they've been handled, now everything's outside the parentheses, and we can combine the 8a and the 1a and get 9a. Okay? okay. Connor? Uh, I'm going to ask about the next problem. Oh, 9a minus 2. So all great questions. I really like that you're asking questions. Um, I'm just going to erase some things that would be confusing. Any other questions? Okay, ready to go. It's going to be the weekend before we see each other, so I wish you a good weekend, but I also wish you to stay seated.